Hello, Reese from the Point Music Podcast thingy, back with a new episode. This time around we have Lily from Clues, one half of the sister Lee duo, Lily and Grace. Um, Lily and I chatted for a good half hour about uh, the new single, Everything's Heavy, which is superb, and the relationship with Holy Holy, and preference and release cycles, all sorts of things that I, I found interesting, I hope you find interesting. Anyway, Buckle in, enjoy this one, ladies and gentlemen, and people of all sorts. This is Lily from Clues. What's that? Your so my dad ready? always says, "Yeah, you're on, you're on camera right now, man." <laughs> Great, you well, ready? I was Lily, born ready. Yeah, Lily from Clues. Oh, thank you for joining me. This is um, I'm interested in doing this one. Like I, I've actually had a big break from podcasting, um, mainly because I oh really? Yeah, well, I had to buy a house, um. Yeah, the whole okay. Sunshine Coast rental crisis thing, and now I'm not on the Sunshine Coast. So, yeah, that's the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah, everyone. That's okay. You have to sort your life out. Yeah. But Podcasting can wait. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it took a while, but yeah, back into it. Um, Congrats on Everything Hurts. Thanks. Everything oh, Everything's heavy. heavy. I had that confused with another song I was going to bring up, but Everything Heavy. Everything's what heavy. What about... What about everybody hurts? Everybody hurts R-E-M. sometimes. Yeah, no, everything's heavy. That's what I meant. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, oh, that's okay. I actually really dug this track. Now you, yeah, both you and Lil, uh, you and Grace, um, basically. Wait! Oh my God, Reese, that is so spooky. What? I was just gonna say, um, I was just gonna when he said, oh, like everything hurts is everything heavy. I was gonna say, oh, you know, um it's one thing to get the song name wrong, but what people usually do is like get our names wrong. Like they call me Grace and they call Grace Lily. Yeah. And you always said, great. Oh my God. Now I'm getting confused. With two <laughs> two. The point is that it's all a big soup. Someone's Lily, someone's Grace. The song is called something. Who knows really? Well, as I mentioned, my eldest daughter's name is Liliana Grace. So that's, I have a little bit of excuse there. Because, See? Yeah, yeah, I'll get a little bit mixed up. All right. Um, back on track. Go on, go and on. now I've got to remember what I was saying. But um, everything's heavy. As you mentioned yeah. in, in, in the press release that was sent through, from, um, it mentions you, you, your name dropped basically uh, PJ Harvey. Um, uh, there was a few mm. other artists in that draw heavy, heavily influenced from. But, but, yeah. as soon as I heard that and with you and, and Grace's, like, the way you guys harmonize, which we'll get to in a minute, because it's just the freakish sister thing that you know, yeah. only siblings can do. Um, Luscious Jackson just popped straight into my head. And I, oh, I don't even know who that is. See, okay, so I'm showing my age here because I'm I'm like I'm in my 40s, so I'm a full Gen X, a 90s teenager, right? Luscious, Luscious. No, but I love stealing music off people. Okay, look Luscious up. Luscious Jackson. Yep, look up. I'm going to write this down. Oh, maybe not now, but. Well, yeah. Naked okay. Eye. You can send it to me. Remind me. Naked Eye by Luscious Jackson was the first thing that came to mind. Now, Naked Eye is actually a bit more Ooh, sort of happier kind cool. of thing. And you guys have gone yeah. fairly dark in tone with this song. Even. Mm. Yeah. That was the first thing. I mean, obviously, I got the PJ Harvey thing straight away. Um, mm. I'm going to be honest and I actually have never listened to Fontaine's DC or anything like that. So, uh, I mean, oh, that's okay. I'm going to go but, check you know, that out P- now. PJ's probably from your era yeah. and Fontaine's is from ours. And then we, we meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I actually well, that's Triple cool. J. We don't, we don't often get, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't often get kind of new, uh, reference tracks that I haven't heard before. Mm. All right, you need to. You know, I think it's like once you have once you have grungy guitars and harmonies, it's kind of easy to draw comparison to. Yeah. Um, a handful of bands, but that's really cool. I'll definitely listen to that song. Like I was actually backtracking through your, your discography um, on the way home from work today because this surprise, mm. surprise is not my full time job, um, and listening to the EP. And even though there's only a year's difference between that EP, um, Love Luck omens and your mm. two latest releases which is everything hurts and uh, heavy everything's i've done it again yeah i don't i don't heavy. i think <sighs> i think for the purpose of today it's everything hurts because once hurts. something's imprinted in your brain you can't you can't it's unravel just, it and anyway and lean across, lean across. everything's heavy <laughs> yeah yeah that you're right they do sound they sound pretty different 
They do, but did you, um, because you teamed up with Oscar Dawson from Holy Holy for production duties on this one and, and Lena Cross? Lena Cross we did with Fletcher Matthews. Okay. Who... Um, is a Sydney-based producer who's also awesome, and he did our very first song ever called right. Museum, right. which was like in 2018. I do know the and song. he's a good mate as well. Yeah. So we, yeah. So that was it. so. It's yeah. It's it's interesting for um, Grace and me because we're not so into the production side of things. We mm. have a very clear vision when we go into the studio, but mm. it really kind of the flavor of the song i guess you would say comes out in who we work with as well because all those three projects were with different people yeah so yeah it's interesting that it sort of comes across so clearly well i was gonna say because i actually like i love i've known of oscar since dukes of windsor i was actually a big dukes of windsor mm. fan right oh you're og, OG I, yeah uh, and and then yeah holly holly is amazing as well but um when i i could actually hear his influence coming through in this track and and what one of the most noticeable things was how wet the actual vocals are like there's a lot of reverb and, and depth and, and really rich in it and to make yeah. to make you, you and grace's vocals just like even uh richer and deeper that that's some skill there because you listen back to love luck omens and yeah totally great balance there but it's I don't know what he's done. I mean, there's a little bit of slapback delay in the in the earlier stuff, but this one here is just so deep, and that's why I think. Yeah. I have... Okay. When we went in to make everything's heavy, we specifically talked to Oscar about really making the vocals wet and reverb because you're right, it's something that we don't usually do. And in mm. fact, we used to like actively uh, try and make the vocals on all our songs really dry mm. because the vocals are already quite prominent, and I think also. Um, with, we found, especially playing live, like sometimes with female vocals in rock, if they're, if they're too wet, it sounds a bit like airy fairy. Yeah, I agree. And we always like pushed against that. And then, yeah, we've been listening to a lot of Wolf Alice and Fontaine's, like there's other bands I was saying. And we, we were like to Oscar Nah, like, let's really just like make the vocals exactly what you just said, really wet and like a kind of deeper and draw out that texture a bit more. So, because you go, you take the higher harmony, don't you? And Grace takes the lower. Is that right? Or do you switch? Uh, it's the other way around. I oh, usually okay. do the melody, I guess you'd call it, and then Grace does like high harmony. But we do switch sometimes. Yeah, because I was watching a but lot. But Oscar lot made of us sing the chorus in unison, which we don't usually do. I did notice that. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you both meet in the middle, whereas like in in the actual mm. verses, you split. And man. Okay, so that was one of the reasons why I drew the comparison to Luscious Jackson because they actually have that kind of style. Because they're they're oh, they're cool. all female band and incredible incredible band. Um, I don't I don't think they still exist anymore, but yeah, there's nineties. Anyway, deep dive down for another mm. time. Anyway, um, you toured with Holly Holly, so the whole production with Oscar did that come first, or did you tour with Holly Holly and you just go, hey, Oscar? let's work on a track together yeah it it went that way the latter way we've known holly holly for ages i think we met their manager jess at big sound in like 2018 or something and really clicked with her and yeah started doing harmonies on some of their stuff um we did a tour with them like supporting them we started touring with them doing harmonies in the live show like we featured on one of their songs so i think over time I've said this before as well, like they're a little, obviously they're way more advanced in their career than we are and they're a little older Mm. and they've been like them, Oscar and Tim and their whole team have been really good kind of mentors for us uh, over the past few years. So we've kind of really become like close to them as people, which is awesome. So working with Oscar was kind of just like something that we really wanted to do to hang out with him as a person and we love his sensibilities and it, it kind of just made sense but yeah it's one of those organic things that came from that relationship and ended up being really awesome so you're going to work with oscar again yeah i think we're i think we're doing a whole album with him Sick. i think there we go or a bunch we're doing a bunch of new tracks in the next couple of months so uh okay so you're going to be doing another ep or are you planning on a full lp I think a full album. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so 
Here's the one thing I, I normally bring up, and as someone who is in multiple bands that is waiting for uh, at least two albums <clears> to drop, and one of them is my problem, <clears> and the other one is um, circumstantial. Um, how important to you in these days do you think an el- actual album is? Because a lot of people just put the emphasis on or do the waterfall drop process in Spotify, like they just single, 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 single. Oh, there's the actual album. Whereas... Yeah. I like to be dropped a couple of singles and then go, okay, surprise, here's the whole album and there's some tracks you've never heard before. So how how important is that for you to do a full album without like drip, drip feeding anything mm-hmm. apart from maybe one or two singles? It's an interesting question because I guess there's like what's important to me as a music consumer, mm. what's important to me as you know, someone who's making music in Clues. And then what's important to me as like Clues is a, obviously a business and we have like a label relationship yep. that we love, but, you know, need to consider. And I think that, I think it's interesting because as a music consumer, especially with streaming, I've really noticed my listening habits have become I wouldn't say my attention span is shorter, but my turnaround in terms of the amount of music I can consume is a lot quicker. Yep. And so I I even expect artists to drop, here's a single, here's a remix of the single, here's a mm. stripped back version of the single, here's the LP, oh, here's the flip version of the LP, here's the album, here's the album with features, you know what I mean? Yep. Here's, like, I feel like the album cycle has um, condensed a lot and the volume of music that people are expected to put out now has increased, yep. which is awesome because I love listening to music and I love it when my favorite artists put out loads and loads and loads and loads of music. But then for us, it is interesting, especially for a band at our level, we haven't done any major long form releases before. Mm. And it is like, I don't see us as a streaming band at this stage yet. It's not like we're getting hundreds of thousands of streams like oh you're close we do we do do, we do well but we're not (laughs) we do as a as a whole but you know not to the level where it's like algorithmically we're just racking up Mm. millions of streams every day and i think that for us the focus is still on our relationship with people who actually listen to our music like fans i guess and it's like you know are they gonna buy a record are they going to buy a physical album? Are they going to enjoy, you know, having a longer form narrative? Because obviously we care a lot about song. I, I don't know if it's obvious, but includes we care a lot about songwriting and storytelling. Yep. And it's like, that's obviously easier to do in an album. Mm. So I don't know if I really answered the question, but I just think it comes down to, it's fun to put out as much music as possible. And that's something that we want to do a lot more. But it's also fun to make long records, I assume, because that's what we're working towards at the moment. So I think that an album always has its place because it is a bigger artistic, not to sound too wanky, but it is a bigger artistic it's, project. It's not wanky. It's uh, okay. Yeah. So I think I think it's cool. And I think, but I also think it doesn't matter because I think once you're in a band, especially because, you know, information about the industry is so accessible. Mm you can kind of overthink it and grace and i always come back to obviously music has to make money and there's people whose you know careers and livelihoods depend on bands that they work with us included yep Yep. i mean we have we have day jobs so it's not like same where um yeah exactly so but what i'm trying to say is it's like once you're in a band what do you want to do do you want to put out a song do you want to put out an album like i think it's easy to remember that I mean, it's easy to forget that you can just do make art that you want to make and that's fun if you have the freedom to do that. So that's a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> is it? I don't yeah, know. you, you <laughs> balanced like it. A... That, no, no, that is very fair. I mean, I, I, I myself have to walk the fine line, okay? So for me, releasing an, a, an album is an ego. That's an ego thing. That's basically personal i've I've done this i actually ticked this off the box i've released a whole album of my works instead of like to be honest with you anyone can release a single i mean i, I consume tiktok daily you know because it's just my mm. thing and you can see all these bedroom producers gone and then they just drop singles all the time all right 
cool, but here's the thing. You're a live musician. So am I. Have any of these artists play live? So I think when you're going on tour... That is true. And some people don't play live and tour and they're ex- just songwriters ex- or they're just top exactly. liners. I mean, I get, yeah, I get which that is that. that is a good point. So yeah, I'm ass- I mean, obviously we're a touring band, yeah. yeah, and we love playing live, so we have to have some sort of big body of work to play live for people. There we go. Yeah, so I think I think in rock it still makes sense to make albums. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I guess it depends how granular and nerdy you want to get about, mm. like you said, the waterfall release strategy of streaming, the playlisting, the yeah. It, it Which all... I'm, I'm so into all that stuff because I think it's so interesting, but it's also yeah. fr- it's also frustrating because as artists we have to keep pace, and uh, we are delicate little creatures. All of us creatives, I mean, um, and under high stress situations, it can it can break us. So I like the ability. Yeah, to that's control. what I mean about the whole overthinking mm-hmm. thing. It's it's hard. Oh, it's not hard, but it's so important to stay connected to creativity. Yep. When you start thinking about music as the stakes get higher, start thinking about music in terms of how is this going to sustain me? How is this going to connect with people? Mm. How is this going to make money? How is this going to cut through or whatever? You know, I think that every single artist probably thinks about that. Yep. And, yeah, it's hard not to be distracted by, especially if you – I like the music industry as an industry to work in because I think it's so interesting and it's always changing and it's, yeah, it's a cool industry. So, yeah, you can kind of get lost in those details sometimes, I guess. You're only young. You haven't had the chance to get bitter yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not I'm not jaded, I would say, as a person, but there's still time. There's still time. Uh, look, to be honest with you, most people I've encountered in the music industry are fairly cool. Um, there's... There's, there's always going to be sharks in any kind of industry. That's the whole thing, right? You just got to learn how to swim with them, I guess. Mm. So you've yes. also toured with Hockey Dag. No, Hockey Dag. Oh, mm-hmm. It's been a long day for me. Hockey Dad and um, Boy and Bear. Please get it together. It's not even late I, for you, man, is it? I'm on my second. You're like behind me. I know, but I'm on my second vodka, man. It's been a long day for me. Um, okay. <clears throat> So, Holly Holly, Hockey Dad, and Boy and Bear, the, t- the three main tours that you've done of um, recent times, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which one? Mm-hmm. Which one would you pick out of, like, out of highlights would be it? Oh, well, they're all different. The Holly Holly yeah, tour so. we were on as backing singers. Oh, right. Which is really fun because we don't usually do that sort of thing. But like I was saying, the Holly Holly relationship is very cherished for us. Mm. So that was super fun because we just got to, like, our favorite things to do are sing harmonies and we just got to sing harmonies every night, which was awesome. Mm. And we only did a few Boy and Bear shows, but they were really, really fun because, um, yeah, I think, oh, yeah, the boy one of the Boy and Bear shows was in Adelaide and we just had, like, the most fantastic time in Adelaide because we don't, I don't, for some reason we don't usually go there and tour there. Mm. And I think that's, like, oh, the most fun part of touring that I never take for granted and that we try and appreciate so much is just like when would you randomly go to Adelaide yeah not that Adelaide's even that far or any even like remote places you know in front of Queensland or going out west or whatever no I get that like that was awesome um and then Hockey Dad we just love the Hockey Dad guys and that's a really really fun time so that was really fun um yeah there were a couple of talky hotel shows which were Mm -hmm pretty fun and rowdy it's fun to like go back to places um on the touring circuit that we've done a few times now mm. that are you know aren't hometown shows or whatever not sydney or melbourne and kind of be like oh yeah we we know this neighborhood yeah. we know these people <laughs> like it's fun it's really cool yeah the tour and life. that's another like wishy-washy answer but i can't like well i can't narrow things there, down. there are three different genres which is really strange i mean like uh... I, w- yeah. I would put you guys closer to Holy Holy than any of the other two. Well, definitely not Boy and Bear. That's a, that's a really random one, but very cool because great band. But yeah, um, I, that's why I thought I'd ask because yeah. you, you guys have your own fairly unique sound as it is. I mean, the whole dual having one song that has dual harmonies in it every now and then. Yeah, cool. But you guys do it full time. 
and is I don't, mm. I don't I don't recall any other sort of artist in Australia in that kind of genre that is actually doing this, and that's where you guys have yeah. That I don't know, and we, I don't think we even um, it's not even conscious. Like, oh, we need some sort of point of difference and it's going to be the harmonies thing. No, no. You know, it's like just, in just a... instinctual, right? It's just... Which would also be cool. Yeah, it's just like I... We just grew up singing together and I like singing with Grace way more than I like singing by myself. So when I'm in the studio or singing live, I would... N- Even if like, you know, when we were kids, like if a song was on on the radio, mm-hmm. like you just sing harmony to it. It's just so instinctual. And it is, it is funny that that's kind of an interesting point you'd maybe think about in terms of like those three bands you mentioned that we toured with this year all being very different. Mm. And it's kind of strange because like in, in a hockey dad situation, which is kind of like the surf rock a bit kind of like yep. rowdy crowd. I feel like we can, like our live show brings it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. our live show is very fun and we like just have so much fun and we love touring and we love playing live and it's guitars and it's just like, smacking the shite out of the drums and it's super fun and then yeah so i feel like in that environment we kind of thrive which is maybe different to our studio sound a little i don't know if we sound different live than we do on the, the records i've but never seen your live so yeah it's, that, to ask. yeah too but i'm that's what you think and then i guess the boy and bear situation it's like mm. yeah the harmonies kind of lend themselves to a more chill crowd yeah, I don't know. Did you I don't did, know did you because... sort of like um change up your set list to suit Boy and Bear a bit more than what you would with Hockey Dad, obviously? We oh, that's a good question. Um, not really. I think then when you're playing a live show, mm. like you still bring the same like intensity but in different ways. So the the Boy and Bear shows were like beautiful forum mm. shows and it's more of like that kind of vibe and you kind of that's when I'm like focusing on my voice and making sure that the harmony sound beautiful and everything is lush and it's like yeah then if it's if it's more rowdy hockey dad shows that we're supporting it's more like it's about the vibe and it's about just like having fun <laughs> yep. and just being like rock and roll so we don't really change the set list also because like we don't have that many songs that we play live so there's not a lot of wiggle room but um why is that yeah I don't know well, like you were just, it's not like we've released an album we can pull from, like we have a big back catalogue of written songs, but in terms of our release songs, there's not, there's not tens and tens of them. So we kind of, you know what I mean? I know like, what you mean. We've got our, we've got our little live set list of the songs that we've released. You got your bangers and then you got the ones that you may add yes. every now and then, which is your feelings. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, exactly what you mean. It's, <laughs> that's perfectly normal to be honest with you. Mm. Um, oh, I was about to go into something. Oh. No, God. So the the songwriting process between you and Grace, mm. how does that normally start? I I know this is kind of a generic kind of question. I hate asking generic questions, but I'm actually curious because of the fact that you you're both in an unusual situation where you sing harmonies throughout the whole thing. So who do you both take turns and go? Hey, I've got an idea. Let's do this. Have, or or is it one that's predominantly a bit more of a strong song stronger songwriter than the other? Um, I think that Grace is an awesome songwriter, um, but I write most of the Clue stuff for now, or historically at the moment, mm. um, and I always just write uh, the Clue songs just, um, you know, from my voice notes and my little note memo things in my phone, yep. just lyrics, 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 and I always just write it on my, like, acoustic guitar, almost as if it's a ballad, mm-hmm. and I think that's where the harmonies come in really easily because I write a song like it's just like a stripped back ballady kind of thing that, you know, country or folkish sort of harmonies can be put on top of. And then we have a vision of how we want it to be produced and it turns into hopefully like a kind of dark rock banger or something, which is kind of the clues vibe. Mm. But Grace does a lot of, you know, she's really good at, I find my songwriting a bit wordy. Grace is good at like making the chorus cut through and stripping off some fat and like making, you know, the little earworm really cut through. She obviously writes all the like lead guitar parts and everything. So mm-hmm. she's a bit more, her ears are a bit more hooky, I think. Yeah. And I think because she, I write the melody and she usually sings harmony. She probably has a stronger ear for harmony than I do. So she's really good at like 
finding little earworms and melodies and adding all that sort of stuff to a song, which I think makes it, you know, really elevated. But yeah, we're trying to write a lot more together from scratch. I think everything is heavy. We pretty much wrote from scratch together or I started the verses or something. I can't really remember now, but we're trying to write more. So it's, it's a very musically symbiotic relationship you got there, because a lot of people there's there's in a in a even just in a duo or in a band situation, there's one predominant songwriter. But knowing that you guys piecing, you know your strengths, as you're saying that that Grace is actually better with the hooks, and you're laying yeah, the beds I down. think so. Yeah, that's that's actually a rare thing. Um, I'm well, I jealous. think it's become a little yeah. It's it's also like as we get older, our dynamic as sisters probably changes and improves because when we were younger, you know, you do have that the older, younger sibling dynamic, and I probably had to let go a little bit of my ownership over this is this is my song and I've written the whole thing and Grace, you just sing it with me. It's like oh no, Grace has like really an awesome ear and like is gonna make it's gonna make the song better to collaborate with her. So I think also, you know, just mm. learning to collaborate better has been does that make sense yeah no it does i, yeah. I was going to do the whole thing like who's the oldest sibling thing but you just actually answered that without actually doing yes it. that would be me yeah so do you think you've taken on yeah. a bit of a mentorship kind of role with grace then in a sense um i don't know. i don't think so. i don't know i don't think so i think honestly this is so lame but i think we really mentor each other like there are no, lots of parts of grace where i'm like damn girl you have got your head screwed on and like i can learn so much from you Mm -hmm. in this area of life and she's been through things that i haven't been through you know which is so strange as a big sister yeah to kind of yeah i don't it's kind we're like three and a half years apart or something so when we were kids it was kind of like oh i was a cool teenager and she was a scrappy little kid and i was like get away from me (laughs) but the older we get the closer we get and so, yeah, I don't know. That's the usual thing with sisters. perfect balance. Yeah, yeah, apparently. It well, seems like that. No, it is. Uh, well, from my experience anyway, I mean, I've got three daughters and they're actually... Oh, you've got three. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm outnumbered, but they don't live with me, mm. so it's, I don't have to deal with their moods and shit, <clears throat> which is good. But they have each other. So that, I think they sisters are, are awesome. That's interesting to know that you reckon that she's even probably teaching you things, so... I do find that. Mm. Yeah. Um. We'll wrap things up very quickly because we only have a half hour to do. Yes, I can see the the time. Clock of doom yeah, the clock of down. doom. And I usually like to do a debrief after this anyway while we're off air. Um. But you do have a tour basically in support of everything's heavy. Yes. I got it this time. Nailed it. Um, Go race. Yeah. But you've spread it out. You're going from like the end of this month until February. So. You, which is actually very mm. very clever because you're not going to burn out. You're just doing it nice. Take your time. And yeah. I, I actually dig that. So- I dig it too. I mean, we just played – it feels like we just played Sydney and Melbourne headline shows, which was so awesome. Mm. And then we have a few. We've got, like, some summer festivals, and then it's, like, down to business, clues show time next year, which is going to be awesome. Sick. Have you um, played yeah. much up on, the, on Queensland, in Queensland? Apart no, not City. really. We don't. Yeah, we've done Brizzy, I think, a couple of times, but not enough as we would have, you know, should have. Mm. So, yeah, the Br- a Brisbane date is on there, which I'm really, really excited about. Yeah, you're playing. I think it's at Black Bear Lodge. Is it? Hang on, I'll bring it up. I've got the. I think so. Thingy. I should know. If you let's have a look. Blah 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 blah. You're playing in the valley, which is could be yes. any, could be anywhere, mate. Exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of venues in the valley. Let's have. Hang on, I'm just click the link. So, yeah, you are playing Black Bear Lodge. It's okay. So it's a mm-hmm. narrow one. Yeah, I've definitely been there. Mm. I think it's like a. Is it a bar kind of? It's upstairs, so you got to go. Oh, I'll give you the the hint. Um, the load in. Do some push-ups yeah. and do do some um, strength <laughs> cardio. Oh, really? The load-in has gone okay, upstairs good. out the back and it's massive load-in. I'm pretty jacked, so I usually do the load-in and Grace, yeah. Grace gets to relax. Yeah. All right. So Black Bears, it's, it's, a, it's upstairs and it's a, a narrow one. That that should be – that would suit okay, you really great. well, actually. Yeah. It's going to be fun. So that's not until February 
No, January. No. End of January. Oh, January, yeah. Yeah, sick. Well, Reese, you and your girls, you got VIP for life, so Woo! hopefully see you there. <laughs> well, it'll be me, if anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, my girls aren't old enough to come see Play Club, the oldest one. And she... Oh, yeah, true. I always forget children can't go to shows. <laughs> Sometimes. I do, I Depends what venue. Depends what venue. But generally okay, speaking, yeah, yeah most times. True. Anyway, um, yeah. Lily, it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, congrats on everything's heavy. I see two in a row. Two in a row for me. I got it. Um, You're back on track. It is a great song. Um, I love. I love the sort of direction Thanks, you guys are Reed. taking away from. You've involved with the e- from the EP into this new sound, and I'm keen to hear what's coming up next. Um, everyone, I will Thanks. link the track uh, in the description when we when I put it up live and whatnot. But um, con- good luck on the tour, and enjoy your time. Thanks. And uh, hang on the line there, have a quick debrief with you. But everyone else, adios. Goodbye. Thanks, Reese. I uh, hope you dug that one. Um, big shout out to Lily from Clues. She's an absolute legend, and that was such a almost relaxing kind of interview. And I dug that after a day that I've had today. Uh, do check out Everything's Heavy, amazing song, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, what they're coming up with next. Particularly if they're working with with Oscar again from Holy Holy, uh, and also keep an eye out for them on their tour starting at the end of this month, which is October, going all the way until February next year. Oh, more podcasts to come. I hope you dig this. Please do give it a like, a follow, a share, all that sort of jazz. Uh, it does mean a lot. But thank you for supporting it, and thank you for supporting local music, Australian music, live music, all sorts of music. You guys are legends. Cheers. <laughs>